Darcy Leon, you asked me a question, why do we get hooked on orchids? It's not a difficult question for me, it's just I left it for a rainy day and we have several of those back to back and I am addressing this question now because I think it is perfect to reminisce on days like these, why we are suddenly in a situation that I find myself in. Everything's a little bit bunched up. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze and how did this happen? So from personal experience and maybe this resonates with anybody else, let me know in the comments below as I speak whether you can relate to what I'm talking about as to why we get hooked on orchids. So first of all, what comes to mind for me is the challenge and I compare them to playing golf. I used to play golf before my body told me, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Because in the case of orchids and growing orchids and then the case of golf, practice in these two scenarios does not make perfect neither in golf, no matter how much time you spend on the driving range, or when it comes to orchids. The more we grow, the more we learn, and subsequently, the more mistakes we make because these percentages rise in numbers as our orchids increase in numbers as well. So the learning curve never stops, just like with golf. You're always striving to get better, you're always striving to do better, and you're always trying to hit the sweet spot. Orchids and golf, two scenarios where practice does not actually make perfect, ever. <laughs> the second reason, the confidence increases once we feel successful, <laughs> and usually when we get our first orchid to rebloom for us, that really builds confidence and we get another one. Or now friends and family bring them as gifts because, well, hey, it's an easy gift. You don't have to think so hard when you go to an orchid grower's home birthday, Christmas, etc. There's vouchers, there's gift cards, all this wonderful stuff out there now. Or you just bring an orchid and that grower is going to be so happy. So the confidence factor after a re-blooming of the first one, it's just like, okay, now I'm going to get another one. I know what I'm doing. But also, if we had our first orchid and it didn't make it, then more often than not, that triggers something inside of us, a certain defiance to try again. And this time we are going to get it right. But to get it right this time around, we need to start research. And when that research phase kicks in, it is usually the point of no return. <laughs> because at that point, we see the different options, which piques even more curiosity when we see videos with the words easy in the title. And then we wonder why isn't it easy for us? Or if it turned out to be easy, now we know what we are doing and now we expand to acquiring other orchids that have crossed our path throughout the research because now we are intrigued by the possibility of fragrance, which comes up a lot when we look at orchids. In order to understand the one we're trying to keep alive, hello, orchids with fragrance. And here with starts another rabbit hole. Here we've got a bloom on a plant that for the most part can be grown without any kit and caboodle with long lasting blooms, beautiful colors, usually blooming in winter when everything is dull and gray outside and it's fragrant. Well, <laughs> you got to get me some of those, right? And this is all part and parcel that happens throughout the research of getting the second orchid to grow. We found out about requirements such as artificial light and humidifiers. So even though most orchids can grow without kit and caboodle, as we delve further down the rabbit hole of how do I keep my orchid alive this time around, all these other options are starting to find their way and weave their way into our subconscious mind. And then suddenly we feel that they have to come into the equation if we want our environment and our orchid to survive. Especially if we can't all have 12 hours of light 365 days a year. Now we are trying to keep our orchid alive, so maybe, just maybe, we get ourselves some artificial lights. One is enough, whether it's 40 centimeters or 80 centimeters, and we start to separate out a designated space 
for that orchid where we use the light fixture. And guess what? Usually that light fixture is a little bit bigger than the orchid itself. So to maximize that light that we are putting on that one orchid, we can get another one or another one, depending on the light that we got, if it's not a single bulb. And usually it's not a single bulb. It is usually the first strip of artificial light, you know, just to try it out. And suddenly, <laughs> the magic happens. <laughs> the orchid or orchids that we put under that light, they start to do really well. And we can see what we've been reading about happening before our very eyes. Let's talk about cookies. All our research on the interwebs, my friend Google is constantly throwing cookies at me based on what I'm doing on the internet. And all these cookies throw up recommendations and suddenly we get recommendations of nurseries, ads showing vouchers and gift cards or deals or 10 orchids in a box deal for X, Y, Z, which, you know, at the beginning, it's not that big a deal. You get 10 orchids for $100, including shipping, something that we don't have as an option here in Europe. But let's just say that happens and you're like, well, hey, um, sure, why not? Let's give it a goo. And the shopping begins. And then you wait in anticipation for your first box of orchids. Remember that you've seen unboxing on the internet and now it's your turn to receive orchids. And remember that there is always the subtle direction of excitement that every unboxing that you saw that people are excited. All of that is working in your subconscious mind and you are feeling that build up as well. You're getting your first box of orchids and it's almost like you cannot wait, except you don't understand why you cannot wait, but the cycle has already started. And suddenly these orchids arrive and it's like, oh, wow, um, uh, they're a little bit bigger than I thought, or, oh, they're so small, it's a seedling. Now, what is a seedling? What do I do? How do I take care of the seedling? And off we go down the rabbit hole of more research. But usually when you get a box of orchids or something and it's like your first purchase, you're not fully aware of how big an orchid can be because you know, you've know you been dealing with the first two or three that you're working with under the lights. And suddenly, yo, you've got this big one in the box as well and it's long and you're like, now what? I need another shelf. I need to shuffle things around. I have to accommodate these 10 orchids. I don't have enough light. I'll get another light fixture and I'll move my furniture aside a little bit so that I can have space because now that I've spent a hundred dollars on these orchids, you know, I'm not going to waste my money and let them die. And suddenly you've got 10 more that you're taking care of and researching, etc., etc. The subconscious mind is a marvelous thing because it does things where we don't actually know it's happening. While all this is happening with the additional shelving lights, accommodating space, etc. Well, you know what? The first orchids that have been doing well and have actually survived, they bloom. And the rest is history. We come out of the fog, we step back and have a look at what's going on, admiring the blooms, very, very pleased with ourselves. But we also come out of the fog of craving orchids, getting a collection started, getting the infrastructure set up, and then we see what has happened while we were in this fog <laughs> and ask ourselves, how did this happen? <laughs> Within a short period of time, a craving, if satisfied, becomes an addiction. And the beauty of this addiction is that the purchasing frenzy will slow down. I promise you at some point that purchasing frenzy will slow down. Our addiction switches from focusing on more orchids to the growing of orchids. And suddenly, again, the subconscious mind, if not careful, a second addiction will manifest itself because we find our true favorites and really target at acquiring more of those. And in my case, that would be Rapiculus Lelias because once our shelves are a little bit full of the bigger ones that I like to call top guns, here we go. There are blank spaces which we start to fill with miniatures because why not maximize the space that we have <laughs> while we're at it? <laughs> but in the meantime, there is a feeling of magic as we get to know our orchids and all of this, all of this, what I've just talked about, 
is why we are hooked on orchids. The feeling once we get to know our orchids is so, so satisfying. The connection and bond. Apart from having pets, orchids have something so embedded in them, which I boil down to how they evolve over the millennia to ensure the survival of their kind. Nothing threatened orchids until humans started invading their habitat. No forest fire could decimate them, natural disasters, they survived that. They were around before the dinosaurs, while the dinosaurs were around, and they survived the apocalypse that wiped out dinosaurs. But here we come, the humans, and now they are under threat. So I went off on a tangent, but I'm still answering the question about why we are addicted to these creatures, as I like to call them. I felt it was important to point that out because we, as a species, us humans, also have an intrinsic, ingrained, natural instinct to fight for survival, to ensure our existence, preservation of our kind. And that is exactly what makes orchids tick as well. In my opinion, the addiction comes by the fact that we recognize ourselves in the orchids and that connection that we have with orchids and why we become addicted. We can relate to them. All the other points are valid as well. They charm us, they bring us joy, they're a source of zen, a calm, peace, tranquility. We share them with the world or with our friends. But when it comes to the core, in my opinion, the real why we get addicted is because we share the same instinct. Preservation of our kind against all odds. And then come the blooms and the cycle continues and perpetuates itself. This is an addiction that I wish I could really explore with much, much more at my fingertips. Even if I could just get a greenhouse to accommodate the orchids that I have, I would probably say, I promise, I would restore my dining room <laughs> into what it is supposed to be, a dining room functioning <laughs> as a dining room, if I could get a greenhouse and I would not buy any more orchids to fill up and clutter up my dining room, with the exception of more complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that could live in my dining room without the whole artificial light going on. It would still look pretty decorative and inviting. If you're still with me, I really appreciate it. Long time ago, I bought myself these stainless steel shelves because the idea was to have shelves to the left and right of me in my dining room and the dining room suite, table, chairs in the middle with a beautiful orchid as a centerpiece that was in bloom. That was the idea. And yes, the table is my desk. The chairs are in the spare bedroom. A massive shelf fills the space in the middle. A beautiful glass shelf that used to serve as the family picture stand <laughs> has turned into the shelf that is right up against the glass. My buffet cabinets with all my plates and all the accessories that belong in a dining room has become the Tulumnia resting place for the winter. My desk drawers have been slid together to accommodate Anne Graycombs. <laughs> uh, you get my point. This addiction is something that I believe is because of a connection that these orchids and us humans have, the preservation of our kind. For the orchid, the evolution has made it happen for them, for us humans. That is a question I cannot answer, but I do sincerely hope that we can learn from orchids and evolve to such a degree that we don't destroy ourselves. Anyway, Darcy Leon, I hope that this answered your question. I think everybody has an answer for themselves. What got them started and how did this happen? <laughs> and if you want to share your story, please leave that in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say, how it got from one to 300 plus. <laughs> or whatever number you have, goodness me. The sky's the limit, in my opinion. Thank you, Darcy Luhon, so much for your question. I am so sorry it took this long to film, but it's a rainy day and it lifted my spirits today to answer your question today. <laughs> have a wonderful day, everybody. On one condition, please, that you continue to stay safe. Take care, bye.